Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Mandar Freed. I'm a senior percussionist up at the up at the high school. Um, and today, I'm going to show you guys how to chunk through and how to work through three notes, six feet, no timing. Um, just remember, the whole time when we're playing this exercise, you're trying to work on fluid movements. So when you're playing, never be super tense. Uh, even I struggle with that, but try not to be tense. Shoulders relaxed, arms relaxed. You get a good stance and relax your arms whenever you're playing relax you don't want to seem too choppy the whole point of the exercise is to stay relaxed so obviously i have my metronome my pad and my pair of sticks um i have my metronome at 100 you guys can put it at whatever you need to go to make it as fluid as possible if you start at 80 then do that okay now when working through this you got to go uh check pattern one check pattern two and so on and so forth. You can do it in any order, but I'm just gonna go order on the page for now. Check pattern one, check pattern two, so on. Ugh. So from check to pattern one, your right hand is the constant motion. It's the fluid motion we're working on, right? A uh, fluid motion is gonna be the right hand. So the first pattern is one D tip, right? You got two sixteen notes followed by an eighth note. That eighth note takes up the top. Of, the, of each beat. So you're gonna play uh, te, and it's gonna take up te and ta, it's eighth note space. Eighth note takes up both 16 notes. So, you're gonna go one tite, you can fall on there. One tite, two tite, three tite, four tite. Right hand stays constant the whole time. So, check and pattern one's gonna sound something like this. Right. So uh, you can see the right hand is the fluid hand the entire time. Now pattern two is very similar. The right hand stays consistent from the check into the pattern. Right hand keeps eighth notes the entire time. And you know, one, tick that two, tick that three, tick that four, tick that, right? The eighth note is on beat one. So the eighth note takes one T, one T, eighth note space. And then T is your first 16th note in the top. So one T is your eighth note, one T. One or uh, or te one te one te one te two te three te four te one right and you add your left hand on the top one te da two te da three te da four te da one so if you're playing through the check and pattern two it's gonna sound something like this nice. Now, pattern three and four are a little bit different. It's uh, slightly more challenging only because your left hand stays a little bit more consistent, right? So your left hand is not gonna stop this motion at all for three and four, but your right hand is. So pattern three, uh, as you can see, you got a 16th note followed by an eighth note. Now don't be confused. Um, since beat one is a 16th note, the next beat is on T, right? And T is an eighth note. So it'd be one T, one T, two T, three T, four T, one, right? And because the T is an eighth note, it's gonna take up T and T, right? So you're not gonna play T because T takes up the space of T and T, and the next note you're gonna play is Ta, so Ta one. So as you can see there, you're still playing T and Ta, which is left hand. That's why your left hand is consistent. One T, Ta two T, Ta three T, Ta four T, Ta one, right? If I was going slow, it'd be one T, ta two T, ta three T, ta four T, ta one. Nice. So if you're playing check and pattern three, it's gonna sound something like this. As you can see, left hand stayed fluid the entire time and it wouldn't do choppy. Yeah, you don't wanna be slamming not too choppy, just nice and fluid motions. Before it's very similar, like I said, if you're catching on to the pattern here, before the first beat is a 16th note rest, which is actually the only rest in the entire piece, but it's a 16th note rest. So it's going to take up um, the numbers of each beat. So one, two, three, four. That's where the 16th note rest is. So where your first note is going to be T. You guessed it because all your left hands are so constant. So your first note is definitely going to be T. Woo! It's a wasp. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so pattern four, you're gonna take out the downbeat. This helps definitely if you're tapping your foot here. So you tap your foot on the downbeat, that'll take up that space for you. 
put tabs on it. Right, and if I count that would be one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. Nice. Now, if you play your check into the pattern, it definitely makes it a little bit easier because, like I said, left hand just keeps going the entire time. Nice. You guys just definitely just got through the entire sickening no timing exercise. I'm going to slow this down. I'm going to go super slow for you guys. This is 80. Now, if you're starting here, do not be concerned. I started here a long time ago. I still struggle with this exercise now. I have to slow it down all the time. So I'm going to play it nice and slow for you guys, and I'm going to speed it up and show you what it sounds like at a higher level. Here we go. Make sure you're tapping your foot. Count loud if you can. Got to get these rhythms. One TK, two TK, three TK, four TK. One, take that two, take that three, take that four, take that four. One T, that two T, that three T, that four T, that T take that, T take that, T take that, T take that one. The last part, I forgot to count the downbeats, but usually when we play it at a faster level, it's much harder to count, so I usually don't play it. But definitely count the downbeats if you can. I'm gonna play it one time at 140 for you. 140, I think is a level seven um, bracket if you're trying to be in there, at least I think it's definitely the beginning. Um, if you definitely count, bob your head if you can. Count it first, one t two t three t four t one t t two t t three t t four t t uh, one. That was a hard one. Um, but yeah, definitely work on that because counting will definitely help you play it. I'll play it once or twice for you guys and then I'll let you guys be on your way.